Hey fellow YouTubers, I just got back from a 3,500 mile trip pulling the caboose. If you haven't seen the caboose, you need to see that video. Finished it up not too long ago and we pulled it 3,500 miles across the country. This video is about my truck and what uh, what I had to do in order to make it to pull that caboose. Uh, first of all, it's a 1990 GMC. It came out of that era when they're, they had already started making the new body style, but they kept making the suburbans and the blazers and the one-ton trucks for a few more years i found this truck about five years ago uh, it's rare because it's a one ton that is a crew cab with a long bed four-wheel drive and single rear wheels it was in great shape when i found it so i bought it with it had a 454 and a four-speed transmission the sm465 its top speed was 70 miles an hour when it was turning 4,000 RPMs. So I had seen on YouTube but some guys swapping Cummins motors into these trucks. And I thought, you know, that is a great idea. And I knew that I needed a diesel. I wanted a diesel. A couple reasons. I wanted a diesel for the fuel mileage. But mainly I wanted the diesel so I could pull... I went looking for a Cummins. I found a 94 Dodge single cab pickup truck with the Cummins turbo diesel and a five-speed transmission. So I took out the Cummins, rebuilt the Cummins, uh, rebuilt the NV4500, and proceeded in putting it in this truck here. A lot of challenges along the way, and that's why I wanted to make this video. So let's start off with the engine itself so me and my good buddy danny we rebuilt he did most of the rebuild on the motor uh had it machined built it right uh then i took the transmission to final drive transmission had them rebuild it completely with new synchros uh the fifth gear fix we had to mate that to my transfer case the truck came with originally came with the NP205, which uh, is a great transfer case. Uh, but to get that, the uh, spline had to be changed uh, and get them to, to made up. So the shaft had to be switched out and an adapter plate put in there. The MP205 to the NV4500. Uh, but that required me to change the drive shafts a little bit. The front had to be lengthened and the rear had to be shortened three and a half inches. In order to do that, you had to move uh, the transmission mount back a little bit. I used the original transmission mount and the rubber uh, mounting block. Uh, angle on the pinion came out perfect. I didn't have to change that at all. It has a carrier bearing. So I get no vibration whatsoever uh, out of the rear end. You have to mount the Cummins into the frame and I came across a company called Screamin' Seaman. Uh, yeah, I know it sounds kind of a strange name. Uh, Seaman's his last name, Paul Seaman. He makes a bracket that slides into the frame of the Chevy uh, frame, which in a one-ton frame, it's a little heavier duty than the three-quarter ton frame. But it, it slides right into the frame and you buy third-gen motor mounts, uh, Cummins motor mount. The nice thing about it is you can slide the motor forward and backwards, figure out exactly where you want it. If you want to use the stock fan, which I did, uh, you need to make sure it clears the radiator. And I use the Chevy uh, GM radiator. It's a big block radiator, which works great as long as you put the shroud back on. Uh, but also you have to be able to clear the firewall. Now I did have to manipulate the firewall quite a bit. I spent a half a day uh, with the cherry picker, moving it in, moving it out, seeing where my clearances were, getting under there with a ball peen hammer and just mashing away for hours. Uh, <laughs> hours of smashing the firewall. Some other obstacles I had to overcome was an intercooler, which uh, the Dodge intercooler is pretty big. It wouldn't fit. I didn't want to change the whole front radiator mounts. And of course, my inner, uh, my, uh, air conditioner coil was up front and I didn't want to change that. I left that all the same. Uh, so I bought me an aftermarket intercooler, had a three inch inlet, a three inch outlet, and it fit in the radiator. 
uh, or in front of the radiator, between the grill and the radiator, I had to cut some holes uh, on either side. Uh, it's probably not quite big enough, but it's adequate. So I left it at that. The P pump was just completely shot. And I was, I, I think the delivery valves were shot. It was putting a whole lot of air into the fuel. And so it was aerating the fuel to a point that it, it wouldn't run. So I, I sent that to industrial injection. They completely rebuilt the P pump, put a different cam in it. So I needed to supply enough fuel to the P pump. So I put in a fast fuel system. Uh, it's between the rails in the back. Uh, which is nice because it's protected by the frame rails and it's pulling fuel through a straw that they provide out of the tank and uh, providing it to the pump. I also put in this uh, uh, AFC Live by Power Driven Diesel, which allows me to regulate the fuel uh, somewhat, uh, which uh, I seem to really like that. I haven't completely figured out my fuel mixture, but I, pretty much I just turn it down all the way and it still has plenty of power and, and cuts the smoke to a minimum. Uh, other mods that uh, I had to do was that motor weighed five to 600 pounds more than the 454. So the springs on the front end were uh, three large springs that were pretty much flat. And once the motor went in, they inverted. So what I did is I had off-road design uh, up in Carbondale, Colorado, build me a set of springs for not only the front, but for the back too. I believe, the you know, the front were a three spring set. I believe it's a 10 spring set on both the front and the back now. And that lifted the truck about two inches in the front and a little, about two inches in the back as well. They gave me greasable shackles. The truck rides great now. Uh, made a huge difference in the ride of this one-ton truck. But it handles the weight of that mo motor quite well. And uh, the great thing about it is it, in order to put a Cummins in this frame, you have to, you have to either do a body mount a lift kit or you have to do a lift kit uh, to separate the you have to separate the, the cross member that you put in to, to handle the Cummins motor from the pumpkin because those will want to make contact when you hit large bumps. And I was having that problem. I'd go over a big speed bump or a big dip and the pumpkin would hit the, the new mount that I put in, the cross member that I put in. So the springs gave me that clearance and I haven't had a problem since. Uh, and it gives me an awesome ride. After 3,500 miles on a trip pulling a camper, I never even once thought about the ride. Uh, never thought about how rough it was. I never thought about any of that. The only thing I thought about during <laughs> 3,500 miles of pulling a camper across the United States was how loud that Cummins is. And it's not like you're gonna do anything about the noise of a Cummins. Uh, I'll tell you what I did do so that uh, if you ever want to do the same thing, you can at least have a, a little bit of knowledge. I, I still have some work to do, and I'll tell you what that might be. I put a, a whole new uh, liner in, all dynamat in the top, dynamat in the doors, dyna double layer of dynamat up front, dynamat in the back. Uh, I even put another foam material that they make under uh, on top of that, and then I even took the old sound cover uh, that was under the carpet before, put that back down and then put a whole new carpet kit in this truck. Um, it took, and, and I even put foam around these uh, shift covers. Uh, these came out of the Dodge, just kind of inverted them, but I put them in here. Um, but that took most of the noise out from underneath, from the mufflers. And, and I did put two mufflers in too, to quiet the noise. Uh, and that seems to work out great. But I'm still getting a lot of noise from the dash. The dash and the hood and the windshield seems to be where most of my noise is coming because the dynamat only goes up to about, you know, where the, the you know, all the components start. So I'm going to address that about what I can do in this area and the hood. I think 
if I can absorb some of the sound that's coming off of the Cummins from the hood, I might make this a tolerable truck to take long distance. That was the only gripe, well, one of the gripes I had about the long travels was uh, after about three hours of that wonderful Cummins no noise, uh, you kind of got to stop and clear your mind. <laughs> But there's nothing better than a Cummins as far as the noise, but it's a little much after about three hours. Wow. Uh, and especially after about seven hours of driving, you're about gone nuts uh, in this truck anyway. So that's how I took care of the sound control. Uh, let's talk about clutch. So with the NV4500, I didn't use the Dodge clutch. I put in a South Bend clutch. Uh, heavy duty South Bend single disc clutch and I also use the South Bend master slave cylinder combination that's already uh, pre-filled uh, with uh, brake fluid so it's pre-charged and the clutch assembly the way it bolts to the firewall uh, I believe the Dodge is pretty much at a 90 degree angle, but the old Chevy one was at a slight angle. So I had to build me a bracket that would, the master cylinder would come at an angle so that the, the rod that's going through the firewall can touch, uh, can uh, attach to that south bend assembly and be a nice smooth transition for the clutch piston to travel. That worked out, has worked out great. I haven't had any problem whatsoever with my clutch uh, assembly. Uh, sorry about that. A little, little bit of brain damage right there. Oh, another thing I had to do, I don't think I had to do this, but I wanted to do this, was put in another battery. And it's, an, it's luckily, GM put the battery on either side of this truck over the years. And in this particular one, the, the battery was on the right side. So all I had to do was go to LMC truck and buy a, a, an assembly tray for the left side. And so I've got, you know, mirror images of each other uh, on the brackets. And then I just ran heavy wire across there so that I could have dual batteries. That was one of the simplest modifications right there. Uh, the brakes... Uh, Pretty much the brakes are, you know, all new, but the same brakes that I had before. I did put from off-road design, uh, when I did the, the springs, of course, lifted everything up, so I put stainless steel brake lines in. The Dana 60 axles, the same as it was before. The, the axle in the rear, the, the full float 14 bolt is the same. Uh... This truck does have airbags. The previous owner than me had a monster Lance camper on the back. And so he had put airbags on this to handle the weight of that great big camper. So I have the luxury of uh, taking the air compressor and filling up those bags when I have uh, excessive weight on the truck. I put a big uh, AFE air cleaner uh, in. I transitioned from a four inch to a five inch uh, and then I made my own little shield to pull the air not from within the engine compartment but I'm pulling the air from right behind the headlight so you're probably thinking what did you do with the turbo well originally I put in the the stock turbo but it was it was leaking oil and so I was getting oil within my intercooler and it had a little bit of oil consumption problem. So I, I bought a brand new, see it was a Borg Warner S300. And I put that on for a while. And while it provided lots of power at high RPMs, it just was terrible at low RPMs. The The drivability in town at low RPMs was, wasn't much fun because I'm always feathering the pedal so that I wouldn't just smoke out whoever was behind me. So I took the the HX the the whole set HX35 and I rebuilt it. I put a you know the new bearing kit in it, and that's what I ran. In fact, I put it in right before I left, uh, and it seemed to work great. Uh, it doesn't quite have the power that that big turbo had. I think ideally a set of compounds would be awesome. However there is limited space uh, under that hood 
uh, especially since I left all the air conditioning components in there and I'm not giving up my air conditioning for <laughs> for a big uh, compound set if I can figure out how to put a compound set maybe one day I'll spend a whole week and and maybe build all the tube to fit it all in there but not right now just to let you know what I what I get in fuel mileage so around town it's probably somewhere around uh, 17 18 if I drive uh, highway speeds at 65 I can get as good as 21 miles to the gallon I just did this long trip 3,500 miles and I kept pretty detailed uh, records about all my fuel and I got just over 11 miles to gallon pulling uh, the caboose and you'll see another video with the caboose uh, the caboose weighed about 66 6700 pounds total weight of the truck and the trailer uh, with people in it with all the cargo was probably about 15,000 pounds total and I got just over 11 miles to the gallon uh, over my 3,500 mile trip so if you want to know the overall impression of doing a swap on a Cummins into a, a truck like this you don't have all the comfort features of a new truck uh, that's fine with me I, I don't need I like having roll up windows and push button locks and bench seat. I mean, I like all that manual transmission. Uh, the, the one thing that, you know, you do miss is the nice, quiet interior space that these new trucks have. And uh, the only time that I miss that is on the long trip. Driving around town and going where I'm going, I, I don't mind the noise of the Cummins. But on a long trip, it sure would be nice to have a nice, quiet interior, quiet motor. That's really the only downside to this truck. I, I, I think it has so many upsides. Uh, I mean, simplicity is such an upside these days because there's no DEF. There's no regen. There's, there's no uh, electronics. You know, there's not a single computer in this truck maybe the radio has a circuit board in it <laughs> i don't know maybe the delay wipers there might be a circuit board in there but i don't think there's a circuit board in this truck and you know the simplicity of that is awesome uh i told you i i changed out the turbocharger it takes me 20 minutes 15 20 minutes and i can have the turbocharger out of the truck some of these new Fords, you got to take the whole cab off to, to work on them. The injectors, uh, even unlike the, the Dodge that this came out of, none of the motor is underneath the, the cowl of the cab. Every one of the valve covers is easy to take off out in the open. Every injector is easy to take out. Every line is easy to, to remove. Every hose, every... Every component in this truck is so easy to work on. And I just can't think of a truck that has this kind of simplicity uh, that can pull that, this much weight. And, you know, I guess the, the comfort is kind of an issue that some people wouldn't like. But, you know, I, I get over that because I'd rather have practicality and simplicity. The other thing I like about this truck is how cheap it is to operate because being an old truck you know it's cheap to register uh its value is low tires are easy to come by uh in the right size now that i've rebuilt it i'm hoping it goes to the rest of my life i hope i can keep it the rest of my life and who knows it might get uh, 500 000 miles so this is only my third truck one i'm sitting right over there it's a 1972 gmc with a 250 straight six in it and i drove that until i was 25 i think put 300,000 miles on it my other truck sitting right over there it's a 1992 that i bought new with a 454 and it has over 300,000 miles on it and you know i bought my wife quite a few cars and we drive those but as far as trucks i mean this is only my third truck i mean how odd is that who knows maybe this truck will go forever Although probably in my older age, I might <laughs> decide that I want a little more comfort, the creature comforts, but I'm happy. I'm happy with this.
you know what I'm really happy with is that I, I just went 3,500 miles pulling a very non-aerodynamic camper and I had zero problems. I mean, zero. And the trailer had a blowout, but that was pretty simple to fix. But I mean, zero problems. So if there's anything I want, I want you to get out of this video is that, you know, old trucks, you got to find the right one. I, I don't doubt that you have to find the right one, but there are Ford, Chevys, and Dodges out there that can go, you know, another 500,000 miles with the right motor care and modifications. An old truck can go forever. And that's what I'm hoping to prove with this one. So I appreciate you watching and there'll be more videos to come, especially about the caboose. So push that button and subscribe.